we're finally seeing Australian games make their mark outside of just Australia. And it starts with local celebrations like Melbourne International Games Week. It's hard to believe that 2024 will mark the 10th edition of Melbourne International Games Week as we know it. 2015 feels like both yesterday and a million years ago. Back then, Australia's total industry value was reported at over $2.8 billion, digital sales were beginning to eclipse physical, the arcade dev space was in full swing, and we were all playing our mellow and crossy road. The local scene was growing fast, and so Melbourne International Games Week became more than a good excuse to kick back with your colleagues. It became an opportunity to connect, celebrate, and share. In the years since, we've seen studios rise and fall, seen homegrown games make a splash globally, and most importantly, seen events like MIGWA encourage a whole new generation of Australian game developers to come to the fore. Over the next 10 days, we'll be reflecting on the games, people and events that make Games Week the mainstay that it is. If there's one thing the Australian games industry can pride itself on, it's a culture of discussion. For 2016, we're focusing on Game Connect Asia Pacific, or GCAP, a Games Week staple that focuses on networking, shared learnings, and professional development. So GCAP is a mid to advanced level conference. It is an upskilling conference. It is there to share knowledge. People come together to talk at GCAP and they are sharing their time, their learned expertise, and their history. So we focus a lot on that sort of mid-range upskilling that you're not necessarily going to get from a YouTube tutorial or anything like that. We also have a real person first focus on our networking so you feel comfortable and you make those true and genuine connections at GCAP. GCAP has always been a very fun way to start off Games Week. It's very casual, it's very laid back, very upbeat because you just see your friends after maybe not seeing them for the entire year. Ella McIntyre's Honey I Monetize the Kids is one of my favourite. It is extremely informative and I think is still relevant even today so go check it out on the GCAP YouTube. Australia has some of the most talented indie developers in the world, but getting their names and games out there can be a challenge. That's why our focus for 2017 is on events that boost the indie scene, like PAX's Indie Showcase and Freeplay's Parallels. Being involved with MIGWA as an independent game is a really good opportunity to put your game in front of a lot of different kinds of people, whether you're doing it at a more industry-facing event, so you're getting other developers' feedback, taking your game to something like PAX, you've got access to this massive audience of people who may not even be aware that games are getting made locally in this way. So Parallels began as a showcase of local game development that you wouldn't necessarily see at the bigger games shows and honestly can have a pretty big impact on independent games' success. We are seeing scouts from publishers. Several games that have been shown at Parallels have gone on to be signed by publishers and gone on to have success because they've been seen first at Parallels. Getting out to a bigger event and seeing people respond to it, such a morale boost for developing a game. I think. Growing up nerdy wasn't necessarily a cool thing in the 90s. So to then be in a queue hall with 5,000 people just singing country roads makes me want to cry now. Bringing thousands of gamers from all over Australia, PAX is a hub of friendships, discoveries and communities. From unhinged panels and tabletop to PAX Together and the Cosplay Comp, PAX is a Games Week staple and our focus for 2018. PAX is the home of everything geeky and nerdy and in between. You've got your games, you've got your AAAs, you've got your indie, TCGs, TTRPGs. Gaming is for everyone. I think the big thing about PAX is that it draws a lot of people in from outside Melbourne and it's not necessarily people who are purely dev focused. It's just really good for getting everyone who is enthusiastic about games together in one place. When you're at the show, take a minute and really absorb and look around what's going on. Especially when you're in the Indie Rising section or showcase, this is the future of gaming. We want all voices to be heard. I remember a whole bunch of people just coming up to me and saying, honk, I never really know how to respond to that. It is a lovely morning in the village and you are a horrible goose. 2019 saw the release of Untitled Goose Game from Melbourne-based studio House House. The game quickly became a bona fide Aussie hit with an Acme exhibit, a BAFTA and a great honking legacy. It is a mischief simulator. It's all about creating mischief for people who do not deserve it. House House just discovered a joke that everybody finds funny. 
what happened at Games Week in 2019 was this almost overwhelming moment where finally the game wasn't ours anymore. It was everyone else's. I wasn't expecting so much laughter. I know that sounds ridiculous because it's a comedy game. Just seeing the goose walk around and seeing the gardener's response, that was such an amazing experience. The team at House House had a lot of support from the people around them. Events like International Games Week are very important for the next Untitled Goose game to emerge. You can tell how insane we're getting. The creative choices are unhinged. To say 2020 was a tough year would be a huge understatement. With a worldwide pandemic and social distancing mandates making in-person events impossible, Games Week had no choice but to go digital. It was a real creative challenge trying to capture the vibe of an expo that's taking place entirely on your screen. It was myself, Ben Hassick, Joel Rennie and Shlee Hull, and it was our job to manage all the videos that came through during Australia's eight hours a day of live streaming. We'd then hand over to the UK for eight hours, and then they would hand over to the US for eight hours, and then we would take over again after that. And that went for nine days, nine days straight of PAX Australia. And we were doing all of this out of Joel's parents' back room, because frankly, that was the best MBN that we had access to. We went insane. Nine days is too much. I'm a changed man. At the end of the day, PAX were very happy with the consistent quality of our streams, and we were happy with the job we did. I had my appendix blow up two days before the Agdas, and I wouldn't recommend that anyone ever do this. I was calling in to my own computer from the Alfred Hospital. I produced the show as normal. The Australian Game Developer Awards, or Agdas, are the Australian games industry's night of nights. In 2021, the industry made space for attendees online. What we did in the live stream situation is put a lot more effort into the social media. The red carpet tweet was incredibly popular and it ensured that people from all around us Australia were actually sharing pictures watching the stream and our goal is still to always elevate and celebrate those winners as best we can. I get to take the finalists, cut them together, make something that excites people, that gets them like hype about what's happening in their industry. 2021 in particular was the year that Unpacking was the game of the year. I'm yet to meet a person that hasn't loved that game, went on to win a lot of global awards as well. That makes us feel that the Actors is the first award ceremony on the global calendar. Some games are cult classics. Others encourage you to start up a cult in service to a lamb overlord. Who are we to judge? Released in 2022, Cult of the Lamb is a Games Week darling, with repeat appearances and a legion of devoted fans. It's been a while since we've seen the local industry go as hard as they have for Cult of the Lamb. When that game came out, it already felt like something important had been released, but to see Massive Monster immediately feed that back into the local games industry is awesome. Their ritual, not to mention all the stuff that Massive Monster was doing at their studio, seeing them succeed as much as they did felt major. The local love for the game breaking into the mass media really brought the community together. It does help that a big chunk of the team lives in Melbourne or in Australia. The rest of the team lives in the UK. We take the opportunity every games week to bring the whole entire team together so that we can celebrate and show it packs. Creating something that's the first of its kind requires a feat of godly strength and determination. Crafted by Melbourne-based Summerfall Studios, the melodies of Stray Gods became the undeniable soundtrack of Games Week 2023. We were going into Melbourne International Games Week not really knowing what to expect from the local community because I think mostly we'd seen stuff from the international community. The response was so much bigger and the kindness was so much bigger and I kind of expect a lot of kindness from that community. Winning Game of the Year at the Australian Game Developer Awards was Pretty incredible. Stray Gods, the role playing musical! The whole team was right at the front holding our breaths. It was just like this release of tension and excitement. Just being able to like cheer amongst my fellow team members and just be like, yeah, we really did something phenomenal. Summerfall was made so much from the Australian games community. Standing up on stage and not really knowing what to say was so overwhelming as I looked into a crowd of our peers. Really solidified for us that we had something really special. 
If it feels like the last 10 years have gone by in a blink, don't worry, you're not the only one. Melbourne International Games Week has been a staple of the industry, but now that we're done looking backwards, it's time to look forwards and see where the industry hopes it'll go next. A lot of effort goes into making sure that we have international people, and we'd like to see more internationals take advantage of that. MIGWA especially is, is really important because of the breadth. If it was just GCAC, if it was just the Agdas, if it was just Parallels, if it was just PAX, it wouldn't have the pull. But having all of that stuff there makes, I think, an easy call for especially international guests to poke their head in and go, oh, interesting, okay, there's a lot going on here. More games by First Nation-led developers. There are already several, but I would love to see the infrastructure and support to see more of these cool independent games from diverse developers through to release. We have introduced the Owlbear Theatre, which is our tabletop role-playing RPG dedicated theatre. To see this talent come out of the community is so cool. Look, we all just need an excuse to get out of the house every October. Thank you.